Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Victor. We're Sandbox Percussion. Uh, we're thrilled to be presenting this live stream concert for you this evening from our studio right here in Brooklyn. Um, this concert is being presented by Concordia Chamber Players, so thank you so much to them for putting on this concert. It's so great to virtually meet all of you out there, so thank you for tuning in. Um, that first piece that you heard was a, a piece that I wrote actually called Bell Patterns. I uh, wrote a few years ago. Uh, and the next piece is a piece called This Is My Canvas by Natalie Dietrich, uh, who's a good friend of ours, composer we met actually in grad school, uh, back when we were in grad school at the Yale School of Music. So before we get into it, just a couple of quick housekeeping things. Um, at the end of the concert, we have a Zoom meeting that the four of us are going to be on, um, and all of you are welcome to join as well. I think the link for that meeting is in the chat. Uh, and also in the description, in the video description as well. So we'll all be there uh, chatting with you after the concert. We would love to meet all of you, talk a little bit about some of the music that we played or whatever comes up. Um, so we're looking forward to, to meeting you then. Um, also, we have a little game for you to play throughout the show. Um, we'll call it a brain teaser. Um, we have a baby picture. <laughs> we're gonna embarrass ourselves a little bit here. We have a baby picture. Um, and I think it's going to show up on the screen in just a few moments. If you can guess who this member of Sandbox Percussion is, then you will get uh, a mention on our Instagram. Yay! Uh, Instagram mention. <laughs> so if you can guess who that person is, we'll, we'll let you know at the end of the show uh, who that member of Sandbox Percussion is. So without further ado, we'll get into our second piece here. This is My Canvas by Natalie Dietrich. Thank you so much for joining us.
Hello everyone, this is Johnny Allen, and thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, I will be introducing the next pair of pieces, actually. Um, the first one is, uh, almost strangely, a piece by Johann Sebastian Bach. I think he's the only deceased composer on this program all evening. Uh, not, not your typical classical concert, I guess. Um, but, uh, but the piece we'll be playing is, is a movement, the Largo, uh, the slow movement from uh, his fifth concerto for piano and orchestra uh, in F minor. And this is a piece that we first arranged. Obviously, he'd not, he did not write it for percussion. Um, but, uh, but we arranged it a couple years ago when we were going to be playing a concert in this beautiful room in Washington, D.C. that had this Baroque kind of architecture and this, this uh, gold-laden uh, molding and, and all these ornate fixtures inside. And we just thought it would be a shame to play there without playing something from the Baroque era. Um, and Bach was a great place to look because I really feel like his music kind of transcends uh, specific instruments. You know, it, it's mostly about the music, not about uh, what instruments it's played on. It sounds beautiful on string instruments, on wind instruments, brass, and on percussion. Um, and there's a whole massive amount of music by Bach, so there was quite a bit to sift through. Um, and the way we landed on this particular movement uh, was because it did seem uniquely suited uh, to percussion in a way. First of all, the fact that piano is, in fact, a percussion instrument, um, maybe one of the earlier ones, I guess, in Western music, um, and also the fact that the orchestra accompaniment is completely pizzicato, uh, which means plucking the strings, and the sound of a plucked string instrument is actually a really similar sound envelope to uh, that of a percussion instrument striking a marimba or a vibraphone. Um, and so, so it seemed like a natural fit. Um, and the way this piece ends is actually with uh, something we call in music a half cadence, uh, which is kind of the musical equivalent of a, of a, of a um, cliffhanger. Um, so if we were to play the piece by itself, the whole audience wouldn't quite be ready to clap for us. We, we had to go straight into something else. And in context, the piece does just that. It moves straight into the next movement um, triumphantly. And um, so we, we felt like we had to put another piece after it. Um, and so we chose this piece by David Kroll uh, called Music for Percussion Quartet, which if you tuned in at the beginning of this stream, maybe 20 minutes before, you got to hear a little bit of it. We actually just recorded it, uh, released it back in February on our first album. Um, and this has been one of our, our favorite pieces. Um, and it matches with the Bach in the sense that uh, the instrumentation is similar. Uh, it's for vibraphones and marimbas. Um, and also harmonically, where that Bach kind of leaves you hanging, this gives you maybe not an authentic cadence, but a deceptive cadence, we could call it, uh, which also makes sense. It's a little deceptive to move from a piece written hundreds of years ago to a piece written just five years ago now. Uh, uh, David wrote this piece in 2015. We've loved performing it ever since, uh, mostly because of how personal it is to, to him. Uh, each movement represents a location he lived in his life. He spent a lot of time in Alaska, and he also spent time in New York City. Um, and I don't think I'll have to explain to you which movement is which. Uh, it's very clear which is kind of the expansive Alaska landscape and which is the hustle and bustle of New York City. Um, and without further ado, here is Bach followed by Music for Percussion Quartet by David Kroll.
Hello, everyone. My name is Terry. Uh, I'm here to introduce the next piece, uh, which is actually a world premiere. This is Pillar Six by the composer Andy Akiho. You've probably heard a little bit about this piece. If you've caught any of our past live streams, you've heard about Seven Pillars. Uh, that's a much larger project, and this is the world premiere of one of those movements. Uh, so Andy, or Sandbox, was actually just uh, at a two-week-long residency at PS21 in Chatham, New York, where we were recording and editing and kind of getting the mixing started for the commercial album for uh, all of Seven Pillars. Uh, that is set to be released sometime in the spring of 2021, so keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, you'll have to put up with us releasing or giving you a sneak peek of these movements kind of one at a time. I know we've done a couple of them on these live streams before. Um, really quickly, I saw a chat in the live stream earlier, someone asking if it was too early for a cocktail. And I think that we in Sandbox think it's never too early for <laughs> our specialty cocktail. I hope some of you are enjoying that. Um, I also know that there is a guessing game happening uh, with a baby picture of one of us. So uh, while you're thinking hard about which baby, which of us that baby is, here comes Andy Akiho's Pillar Six. Thanks.
Hello, everyone. I'm here with my good friend, Andy, uh, who is the composer of Pillar 6 that you just heard, and is also the composer of Pillar 2 that, that we're about to play now. Um, now, I know that some of you in the audience were probably at the concert that Andy and I played at Cradle Valley back in January. That really feels like like a lifetime ago when, when we were playing concerts like that, but that, that, that was really a special memory. Um, and, and Andy, I know that after that concert, you hung out at Cradle Valley for a little while, and you were actually working on Pillar 2, uh, the piece that we're about to play. So I was wondering if you could just tell us a little bit about what you were doing dur during your time there. Um. Yeah, that was a. I'm, I'm very grateful to have spent more time after our concert. I had a lot of fun there, and uh, yeah, we had a blast playing there. Um, and I was uh, very fortunate enough to be able to work on the piece there uh, and kind of set up shop. And we still had the percussion instruments set up in the room, and, and it was uh, it was it was a nice place to get away and write and. Well, particularly, I got a lot done with Pillar 2 um, out there. And very grateful for Michelle and Candace and Steve uh, for that, letting me stay there. And I worked on um, I worked on Pillar 2, mainly the architecture and figuring it all out and 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 working with the sounds, with the vibes and the tallies, and uh, just, just working out the, the numbers and how, how with, with you know, the rhythmic grid and all that with the piece. And um, also working on your solo, working on the Brenda's solo. Nice. Yeah. And so it, it, it developed a lot of the ideas. So when I finished that up, the roots of that came from working there. Um, and then, you know, I walked around New Hope, Pennsylvania a lot, just where that was. Um, I went into town a lot. I went to coffee shops. Um, and I forgot the name of the other town, but Lambertsville? Yeah, I think so, right? Yeah. It was like right across the border with New Jersey and PA, right? Yeah. And, um, but even in, in New Hope, it was nice to walk around there and hit up some coffee shops and work there. It's always like right in the coffee shops. Um, yeah, so most of, I, I would say most of the architecture and the ideas for Pillar 2 were, were really worked out there. It's a lot of fun. It, it's super cool to to track the the progress of of you writing this huge piece in the many different places that that you wrote it. You know, when when I look at all of the movements, I can I can think about the cities or or the special places that that you were in. And I'm so glad that that Cradle Valley ended up being the one for for Pillar Two. Oh yeah, yeah, it's very important. Um, the environment I'm in when I'm writing really affects the piece, so it's, it was a good place to be. A lot of good energy and vibes there. Yeah. 
Well, thank you so much for, for writing the, the amazing work that, that you've written for us and, and for spending the time with us here today. So uh, without further ado, here is Pillar 2.
thank you everyone so much for for tuning in uh we, we had such a great time playing uh and thank you so much to to concordia everyone at concordia that worked with us uh, for the past several weeks to to make this event great thank you all so much um so th there is that zoom hangout right after the concert i think the link is hopefully in the chat or in the description or you can get it on the concordia website please come and say hello we, we would love to to share a cocktail with you um oh and the baby photo so I wonder who, who guessed it, drum roll. It was me, okay. yes, it was me. <laughs> Hopefully some of you got it. Um, but, but before we go here, we're just gonna play one last tiny piece. Hopefully you'll indulge us for just two minutes more. Th this is a beautiful little postlude by El Elliot Cole. Um, we thought it was the perfect way to end the evening. So thank you all again for tuning in and here is a piece by Elliot Cole.